On this channel, I've showed a lot of Valorant tips and tricks. Tips about aim, movement, maps, and of course, agents. But this brings up the question, what's the best trick in the game? That's what I'm gonna share today. I dove into the older Lowlander videos, and I picked up what's in my opinion the best tip and the best trick for each agent. I base this around how easy you can get the enemy with this trick or tip, how easy it is to win games, and how often I see people using this trick. Just keep in mind, this is my own opinion, so definitely share your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, we're now at 656,000 subscribers, and we've done it, my friends we've beat little love but now can we beat the ultimate goal relax my cat with your help one day maybe now sit back relax and let's start this video with the trick about the chamber teleport when you use your chamber teleport of course you have a 30 seconds cooldown now imagine you're holding b-side you see an enemy so you use your teleport but then suddenly you hear that the enemies are rotating and going towards a so you rotate too and here's the trick if you retract your teleporter before the cooldown is over the cooldown doesn't reset and you can use your teleporter immediately but the thing is if you wait a little bit too long and the cooldown is over and then you retract it then sadly the cooldown resets and you have to wait again 30 seconds so keep this in mind when playing chamber and a tip for chamber the real strength of his q and ultimate ability isn't that they are strong guns but it's all about economy so consider not using your ultimate when you're low on money but still have a vandal but wait to see if you lose that round and if you lose that round you still have a gun in the next one now let's go to sage the best tip for sage is that you have to practice your grim walls before you use them in game some of these walls like this one are actually pretty hard to pull off and the thing is if you miss your jump during the games then you can't use your wall again so always practice before you use it. As for the best sage trick, the one that I got the most kills with during the sage to ascendant series is this one. When you place down a wall, a lot of enemies will knife it till it's low, then they switch to a gun and shoot the last part. The only thing you got to do is when you hear the enemies knifing and it's almost down, you just break it yourself and get the enemy. Easy peasy kills for you my friends. <laughs> Ah, tricky. <laughs> Let's talk about KO. First, the trick. The KO trick that just blew my mind is the one-way flashes you can do if you are standing on a higher spot. When you are standing on a high spot, just walk towards the edge and do a right-click throw. The cool thing is that you can use this trick on any map, you just need to practice it a little bit. As for the tip, I've said this a lot during the KO series, when you use your ultimate, you're not a juggernaut. Even though your teammates can revive you and you feel very strong, you're actually not that strong. One headshot and you're down anyway, and when you're in the open, you're in a bad situation. This is also sort of the tip for Phoenix. The best tip for phoenix is when you use your ultimate don't run like a blind chicken searching for the enemies i see you don't say to me that you're not the one that's doing this instead of just running of course use your utility you have it for a reason as for the best phoenix trick it's honestly so simple when you use your wall use your flash through it i got so many enemies this way it's time for astra let's start with the best tip as we all know astra only got four stars and when you're taking a side there's a high chance that you need those four stars for a stun a suck in and two smokes for example the problem is though that if you use four stars you don't have anything for the post plan but Here's the tip, if you want to take a side, split B for example, use your stars on the normal spots. Normally you would use your ability behind this wall over here, but now instead of using it, just don't do it. Some people might think to themselves, well, why even bother placing your stars down then? Here's why, if you place down the star, the enemy can see it of course, and if you give them the time, they will probably reposition. So in that case, you can just retract your star and use it for the post plant. Now the best trick for Astra, this one is pretty simple. In the post plant, use your ultimate just around the spike. The enemies might think, hey, I can defuse the spike from the other side, but when they are defused, using the spike, you suck them to the other side of your wall and easy kills. You're on the other side. <laughs> oh, nah. Sofa time, did you know that when you stand exactly on this brick on Pearl, match the second line of your ability with the dark part of the water, but only when the dark part collides, then shoot your arrow with one and a half charge, but while jumping and doing a 360. Of course, this is a joke. But it brings us to the most important sofa tip. When you first pick up sofa, don't try to learn too many complicated arrows. In the end, you're gonna forget most of them anyway. So consider only learning like two or three lineups each game and slowly build out your portfolio. Now the best sofa trick in my opinion, and one of the best combos you can do with one agent in a game. That's the E plus ult combo. Spot enemies with your E and get them with your ultimate. Easy kills for you. Three gone. Oh, Another OP combo you can use is the best trick for Cypher. It goes like this. You place your trap somewhere, stand on the safe spot, and when the enemy walks through your trap, you're gonna wallbang it. I mean, think about it. Why even would you peek? If the enemy walks through your trap or you're attacking with your camera, you know exactly where the enemy is. So wallbanging is easy kill. As for the tip, the sneaky red cages are over. Nowadays, you can't really pull off a cage like this anymore and hide in the corner. It's cool for clips, but the enemies will notice it for sure. Now let's talk about harbor. Let's start with the tip. When you're using your E ability, be careful that you don't don't cut off yourself. Here's an example. If you plant a spike on B on Haven, use your wall from the right to the left and not from the left to the right. You block yourself and it sounds obvious, but honestly, during the games, you might make this mistake like me. Sometimes. 
Yeah, Mr. Lowlander, that is not very smart of you. And the best trick for Harbor is to combine your smoke with the teleport of your teammate, like Yoru or Omen, or of course the Gecko Wingman. About combos, there's one Fate trick that peeks out of every other trick, and that's the combination of your Fate Q with a damage ability like a race grenade. I've seen so many clips of people making like five kills with this trick. Look at this. <laughs> One enemy remaining. What? Hey. what the? Insane, well played. Now a tippy for fate, when you use your ultimate, of course, don't shift walk. I see some people shift walking, but that's not smart, the enemies can't hear you anyway. So just rush on the enemies and get them. Let's talk about breach. The biggest tip is that you shouldn't be stunning and flashing your own teammates. Um, yeah, Mr. Lowlander, of course you shouldn't be doing that. But how? Why do breach players always stun you? Well, here's a small tippy. A lot of breach players have the mindset, I am the initiator, so I should push last and use my util. But on a lot of spots, this is kinda not true. Why? Well, if you push less there's a higher chance that you will stun your teammates because your teammates are in front of you of course so what you should do is when the barriers are just going down push in first for the first few meters charge your abilities it will slow you down and cast it and while you're casting it that's the moment when your teammates are pushing now the best tricky for breach you might have already seen it but when you use your aftershock use your flash inside your aftershock because of the aftershock it's very hard for the enemies to see your flash so easy peasy kills jet let's talk about you an extremely good trick for jet that not a lot of people are abusing is to curve the smoke and then push with a shotgun for example it's a very nice trick to get close to the enemies perfect for a half by this is how it would look like one enemy oh it worked as for a tip when you play jet you should be very confident of yourself i see so many people being afraid to push deep but the best thing about jet is that you can use your updraft and then dash very deep into the enemies this way you're surrounding an enemy on a specific side so don't be afraid to push deep now let's talk about sky a very unique trick that really stuck with me is this one about the flash as most of you guys know if you use your sky flash and activate it immediately it will only flash for a short amount of time but if it flies for a while it will flash longer so the trick is if you want to flash just around the corner don't just flash it but first let it fly up and down really quick and then go around the corner this way your bird is longer in the sky and the enemies will get flashed longer this is how it would look like in game pretty cool trick <laughs> As for the most important sky tip, when you use your ultimate, you don't have to run blindly after it. I've seen so many people get killed because the enemy is shooting on the cabbages. I'm just gonna TP. I just- Oh, what? what? Just look at the minimap where your wolves are going and adapt your playstyle with the info you're getting. The best tip for Killjoy is that you have to understand what type of turrets you can place. You can place an aggressive turret for info or a defensive turret for kills. This is what I mean. If you place your turret on these boxes, for example, the enemies will probably see it and destroy it, but your turret will shoot on the enemy so you know it as soon as the enemies are peeking a main. This is the aggressive turret for info. On the other side, you have the defensive turret for kills. You could place your turret in a corner like this, for example, and now your turret will only shoot on the enemies when they are pushing you'll get the info later but combine it with other abilities and also use it as a crossfire for yourself and suddenly getting kills is easy peasy as for the best trick for killjoy use your abilities in harmony individually your abilities aren't the best in the game but when you combine them and use them together in setups oh man you will give the enemies a hard time now let's talk about yoru and start with the best trick what's in my opinion the best trick for yoru is when you use your ultimate buy a shorty go to the enemies flash the ground go outside your ult kill him with your shorty and teleport back a perfect trick you can use in the eco rounds for example but why do I think this is the best one? Well, I personally got killed so many times with this trick. As for the most important Yoru tip, this one is very simple. Just don't use the same teleport twice if the enemies know that you did it the first time. It'll be predictable. If you watch my Omen to Ascendant series, you probably know what's in my opinion the best Omen trick. It goes like this. You smoke somewhere deep and then you teleport next to your smoke, but not in your smoke. A lot of the time, the enemies will think that you teleported inside your own smoke and they might even wallbang it. But in fact, you're sneaky peeky on the other spot and you can get the enemies from behind. Use this trick and it will surprise you how many enemies will fall for it. Do you need it for some as for the tip, when you use your ultimate, of course, look around you. Somehow, not a lot of people are doing this, but you'll be surprised in what strange corners some people are hiding. It's time for Neon. The best Neon trick is actually a cool mechanic. You could do a double dash, and this is how. When you use your E, you can dash, and then if you use your ultimate, the dash will reset. So with this mechanic, you can dash twice, and you might get some cool clips. Now, the best tip for Neon, don't push like a blind chicken when you're using your ultimate. A lot of people are doing this, but stay focused, my friends. Brimstone, there's a thing that a lot of lower ELO players are doing wrong with this ultimate. In the post plant, for example, when they hear the diffuse, they just think, okay, I'm gonna use my ulti in the middle of the spike and then just chill out. This is not the way to do it. First of all, always place your ultimate so the enemies will have to run as long as possible. So place it like this, for example. Then, because the enemies have to run away, it's the perfect time for you to pee. Maybe your ultimate doesn't kill them, but at least your bullets will. As for the best trick, combine your stim beacon with the ultimate of Gecko, and the Gecko ulti will go so fast that there's no way that the enemies can hit it. Pretty fun combo to pull off. And this is also a perfect bridge to go to Gecko. The best Gecko tip 
tip I can give you is about this wingman. Wingman can plant the spike and if wingman dies, not the real player dies. So the risk factor is a little bit lower. But the problem is that because this risk is lower, a lot of gecko players would say wingman plant the spike over there in the open but that's easy to hold for the post plant. The problem is though that if the wingman is running towards that spot, the enemies can still destroy it. And when wingman gets destroyed in the middle of the site, it's sometimes hard to recover the spike. So always keep in mind where you are saying that the wingman needs to plant. As for the best gecko trick, when you use your flash, for the first few seconds your flash will be very vulnerable. So make sure to use your flash in a way that the enemies will only see the flash when it's ready to shoot. So instead of just throwing your flash, you could bounce it against the wall for example. Now let's talk about rays. The best tip is the most obvious, but still, don't do it, don't use the same double jump twice back to back. Mr. Lowlander, of course not, I'm not doing that. Yeah, that's what I thought about myself, but after reviewing my games, I suddenly found out that I was doing the same double jumps a lot during the games. I didn't do this on purpose, but it was just something that happened. So either I'm not very smart, or more people have this problem. As for the best race trick, instead of double jumping, I found the satchel peak very useful. The main reason for this is because you don't need a lot of skill to use this peak, and easy kills for you. Oh, for the Viper players, the best tip I can give you if you're not really experienced with Viper, always learn at least the post plant lineups. The post plant lineups are the most important things with Viper, and you only need to learn two or three per game. You don't even have to learn the lineups as long as you know them. Consider opening up a YouTube video before the round starts, keep that tab open, and learn it in between rounds. Not the best way to do it, but as long as you know that lineup, it's very important. As for the best Viper trick, there's one thing you have to remember your ultimate works perfectly with a shotgun, especially a judge. So if you manage to plant the spike with your ultimate and you have a shotgun, easy win for you. Now let's talk about Reyna, and if I have to be completely honest, I don't have a lot of tips and tricks for Reyna. The only like tip I can give you is that you have to use your flash either high in the sky or low in the ground, so the enemies will have to flick all the way to the flash. But besides that, my knowledge about Reyna is very slim. So if you got any cool tips and tricks for Reyna, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm planning on doing a full video on Reyna soon. This is the end of the video, thank you so much for watching, and I see you guys in the next one. Peace.